Hello everyone and welcome to another scrapbook layout process video where I'm going to combine some stamping with some Cricut cuts and you can see I've got some of the Cricut cuts here I've already pre-cut everything and then in my little dish here I've got some other elements that I'm going to put on there most of the elements here are from the Let's Go Anywhere digital art collection from close to my heart except for this tag this is from Cricut Access and that one folds over and then this little tab here will tuck through this opening I've created my own title with this and it's going to be a layered title and the font for this is BFC Glitchy Stencil and I will have in the description below everything that I have used today including the cardstock colours and I'm not using any pattern paper because at the moment close to my heart have got a cardstock carnival special going on so the last videos I've done haven't used any pattern paper and this one will be the same and then coming up later this week I'll have another couple of layouts to share with you using cardstock only and that one will be part of the creative design team YouTube collab where all week we're showing cardstock only but for some reason I have just naturally gravitated towards cardstock only for some of my videos this month I will link to the one that I just did previously using SVG collections but this one as I said before I'm going to be using Cricut cuts and I'm also going to bring in let's go anywhere card making stamp set and also the Let's Go Anywhere scrapbooking stamp set. And these stamp sets come with thin cuts and they are currently available on my website to order and I'll have links to those below. And I'm going to combine some stamping onto my base pages and also onto other elements. I've got a couple of tricks to show you. The first one I wanna show you is how I line up something like this with the base page. I'll just flip this over so you can see what I've done. I've gutted out this piece of toffee I'm using the light side and I've got this piece here because what I want is for the white cardstock to meet in the middle to give a seamless look across the edge but sometimes it's a little bit hard to line this sort of thing up because it can move around a little bit. If you've been watching me for some time you know that I love using my score pal. What I'm going to do first though is put some adhesive onto this which is my background layer. So I'm just going around the edges I'm not going right up to the edge, I'm going more in a little bit and this will be where my white card stock will adhere to. And then I'm going to put this into my score pal with these long bits that are connected right up to the top here and that's going to hold them in place and I've got a piece of white daisy here that is cut at 11 and three quarters by 11 and a half so I just have to make sure that I put this down correctly because I want a quarter of an inch border all the way around so for the white daisy piece I've got my 11 and a half inch section here. This is 11 and three quarters. So I need to push this right up against the edge of where the quarter inch marks are on my score pal. And that allows this white daisy piece to be nice and straight because it's gone right up against the edge here. I'm using it as a guide. And then it's simply a matter of just making sure that all of the adhesive is attached here. And then I can take this away and rotate my card stock. I think I use my score pal more for this sort of thing than I do for actual scoring because it really does help get everything nice and secure. Now I'm going to do a dry fit with what I've planned for this just to make sure that what I'm doing works before I do my stamping onto my page. So I've got my title here which is adventure and I've got all my letters here and I've used the offset feature which I use quite a lot and then I will be able to get my letters off my mat and layer them over top like this to create an outline title. I'm not going to do that just yet because what I want to do is see that I've got everything in place first. With the passport there are a couple of layers to this and this is an image from the Let's Go Digital Art but instead of cutting passport out of this and then having to put the tiny little sections in for the P, the R and the O. I used the contour tool and I blocked out all of that and then I typed in the word passport and I've printed that with a silver metallic marker. It's a one millimeter marker, a Cricut marker, and I've attached that to this base so that it would print on the passport and I wouldn't have to worry about trying to get all of these little pieces here lined up perfectly to put on it. I quite like the look of that and then this world image actually cuts out from the inside of this so rather than having it put down back in place with the same color this I've used harbor 
I'm going to turn over my little world and use the light side of Harbour just for a little bit of difference. So what I'm thinking is, I'm going to adhere all these pieces together in a moment, but what I'm thinking is I might have this coming off the edge here. This piece here is a luggage tag and that's going to be where my journaling goes and this is in shortbread and you can see you just turn that around and attach that and I'm going to tie a little bit of string on here. I've got my photo mats so I'm going to use the light side of toffee and this is what I love about close to my heart cardstock. It is two tones so the true colour of toffee is the dark side here but I like using the light quite often and then I'm going to put some four by six photos on this side and my luggage tag going in here and that brings the shortbread that I've used here over onto this page and this is going to be my journal box but I'm going to do some treatments to that and then I've got some geo tags and these are cut out from the same let's go anywhere cartridge and I've made a base layer for those as well and I've also got some aeroplanes that I have put in in mist and I'm trying to decide if I want to use the dark side or the light side and I did a video recently where I did some ink blending just to give them a little bit more definition a little geo tag there I'm going to save these little hearts I think I might pop one up here as well I might have two planes coming out of here. These are so cute. I love the planes with this. So I might put two in there and still have my passport. So that will bring in the title and make it look like it belongs on the page because I have welded that to, it's about a quarter of an inch strip. And then I've got this geo tag as well that I'm going to put here. And I'm liking how all of this is looking, but I'm thinking I want to add a couple of other elements. And I haven't used some of these stamps as yet. So what I can do, because they're nice and clean, is to just take them off the carrier sheet and I might do a little bit of a background stamp. I think I'm going to use mist so that it's nice and subtle and put the world down here. And I love these aeroplane images with the dots and the hearts in there as well. So I'm going to just take this off the carrier sheet as well, thinking that might be fun coming out from the edge up here. And then this one has a dotted swirl as well, like an aeroplane part. I'm just going to take this one off the carrier sheet and load this as well. So I'm thinking I might do a little border coming down this section, but looking at this laid out, I think it's going to separate the right page from the left page rather than giving a cohesive look. So what I might do is do a bit of background stamping coming down this edge just with second generation mist and I think that's going to bring all of this together and make a feature of the title without taking away from my photos and I'm going to do some generational stamping on here and I might do some swirls up in this section as well. So I just need to set this aside for the moment, flip over my Versamat, bring in my page and this is why I like doing dry fitting because what I can do is take everything apart. I've got a photo of this so I can refer to it. I've actually got it set up in design space so that I know exactly where everything goes as well. But I do want to add in this part of the stamping before I start adhering all of this down. I've got some scratch white paper and I'm going to test this to start with. And you can see I have been doing some inking already today. So apologies for my fingers. They're just a little bit inky already. Now these are brand new stamps so what I'm going to do is just season them. When they are produced there is a little bit of film on them from the production and when I do my stamping and my second generation and everything like that I actually flip over my other mat as well so that it stamps evenly onto here and then I'll get an even coverage on this side. But I am going to stamp and then stamp off and I love how this is looking. It's looking really, really nice. So maybe for this one, I'll do it in first generation. So I'm gonna put this down in this corner. because my photo mats, if you remember, are going to come off this edge. I think this is one of the nicest globes that we have had. And I'm going to ink all the way down this side. I'm just going to rotate the page so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Now remember my title is going down here and the passport, so I'm only going to see pieces of this. So for the first one, I'm going to make sure that I stamp this right off to the edge so you can still see the let's go anywhere. But for the other ones, I'm going to rotate that around. So once again, I'm going to ink this up. I'm going to see what this looks like in first and then second. 
I love the second generation for this. I really wanted the detail to come out here. But for this one, I think I'm just going to go with second generation. And put that right in that corner. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this and I'm going to rotate them as I go down the page. Just making sure that that's inking up nicely. I've just put my thumb into my ink pad so I'm getting even ink in now. I don't necessarily want my aeroplanes all flying off in the same direction and I am going to overlap these. Do this one again. Stamp off. And then have this one going off this way. It doesn't matter if the aeroplane is going to be hidden by my title at all. And I'm actually doing that on purpose with this one here. So what I'm making sure I'm doing is rotating my stamps all the time. Rather than having them in the same direction. This one, well it might look like they're crashing if I put them close to each other like that. It's not quite good for the flight path. So I'm going to have this one coming right off the edge here. I'm hoping you can see how gorgeous this is looking with the second generation of mist. I'm going to do another one of these and then finish off with one of these on this side. And that's looking pretty cool. I'm just going to bring in the title again and you can see how that's looking down the edge there. It's sort of creating my own pattern paper and it's not all even stamping. Sometimes I've got more ink on it than others or I might leave the image on there a bit longer for the ink to absorb. I quite like the difference in that. I'm going to bring in the left page and I'm going to do some of that stamping up in this corner here because this is where an aeroplane is going to go. And I think it'll look rather good if I have some of these images and it will bring in the design from the right page over to the left page. So I just need a couple of these. I think that might be all I need for that corner and I think I'm going to do some down in this area here as well because that's where that travel tag is going to go. I'm just going to hold that up to the camera because it might be a bit pale right down here on my Versamat and on my desk. You can see how that's looking with the dotted lines. They're so delicate. I love how this is looking. If you remember, this is the tag and what I'm going to do is some second generation stamping in mist ink onto this so that it's light enough for when I write with either a brown pen or a black pen, it's still going to be able to be seen. So in this one, I'm purposefully not putting the words onto here and it's second generation again. And then I'm going to fill in a couple more of these areas with this other image. I really like doing this with a journal box. I think it adds a gorgeous background to the words and gives a little bit more texture to the page with your stamping. And we'll just go off the edge for a couple of these little bits. I don't want to make it too busy, but I do want to fill in a couple of the wider open spaces. Maybe just a little bit coming off the edge here. So that's going to go onto my journal box. I'm loving how this is looking. I'm so excited about these stamp sets. I had to have all of them with the little dots in here from the Let's Go Anywhere collection. And if you weren't doing a travel page at all, you could mask off the little plane and mask off the words here so that you could use it for all sorts of different types of projects that don't have anything to do with travel. While I've got my mist ink out and I've got this scratch paper here, I'm going to give a little bit of definition to these die cuts. So I'm just going to ink this up and bring in a little bit of colour. I am going to use the light side. I don't need to add terribly much. And as I said, I just did this recently on a video. So I will link to that one in the description below. And at the end of this video, you'll find a link for that. But you can see I'm just adding enough colour here. And I'm trying just to do the underside of the plane. So I'll keep doing that on these elements. And I think I'm going to ink up some of the other elements that have been cut out on my Cricut as well. 
here's my finished layout and my apologies I forgot to press record while I was adding some other little touches so I'm going to hold these up to the camera so that you can see on this fold back area of the luggage tag I've done some stamping using this same stamp set here I use this stamp here because I didn't want to put the words from the other stamp on there and instead of using second generation mist I used first generation when this piece folds back you can see that you get the darker side of shortbread I've used the lighter side of shortbread here and it just felt a little bit flat so I decided to add a little bit of stamping to tie in with the background stamping on these elements. I also added some ink to the background pieces of these geotags here and then brought in some mist on this shortbread piece just to give it a little bit more definition but I really love how this background stamping has worked really well with these dotted lines and the aeroplanes and what I'm going to do with the string on the tags is just adhere some glue dots underneath so that fixes it to the page and doesn't come up over the top of my journaling. The additional element Elements on this page is some mist onto these white letters of adventure. I just put these down onto my all-purpose mat and I just blend it up very briefly onto the bottom sort of half of these letters. It's not a smooth blend. I wanted it to be a little bit textured and then that ties in the adventure title in white with all the other mist elements on the page. And down in this corner here I had the globe stamped and I decided when I was looking at it that I wanted to continue this background stamping across this area here. It looked a bit abrupt when it stopped on the left page on this edge so I've brought it in onto the bottom left area of the right page here and you can see these little dots that I've added these are actually still available they're the cozy up dots and what I love about them is that some of them have glitter on them so these shortbread ones here or they could be toffee they have a little bit of glitter on some of them and then some of them are just the enamel dots in the original color so I've just sprinkled those around making sure that I've got a glitter one in each of these little clusters of them and I've put them around the airplanes this tag here I've put some on and the globe and also this passport area. I really love how this has worked out with the passport tucked in behind this adventure title. Having it on a full strip like this gives a decorative feature to this right hand page. I do love white backgrounds. If you wanted to you could continue this missed second generation stamping to cover the entirety of the white daisy but I actually quite like it just in sections and having a border panel here with a passport tucked under this strip just makes everything belong this passport has got something to live it's tucked in under here and the airplanes and the shading making sure that when I put them down the shading was on the underside area of the airplanes one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video when I was talking about the creative design team is that our membership is currently open for registration I will put the link in the description below and I think by the time my video is the YouTube collab will have started off so we are open for registration for two weeks I'll put all the details down below in the description we weren't actually scheduled to open it up for registration we only open it up two or possibly three times a year but we had a lot of inquiries so we thought we would open it up a bit earlier than what we had planned I feel like I've done a bit of a prequel to the YouTube collab with a cardstock only page here. I really am loving playing with the digital art collection from Let's Go Anywhere and then also bringing in some word art and another piece that I could get from Cricut Access. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, happy crafting and bye for now.